Hey guys, it's Maddie, and today we have episode number 19 of 10 Things You Didn't Know About. In today's video, we will be completing the third company in the truck trifecta by telling you a few fun facts you probably didn't know about Dodge trucks. But before we begin, if you've enjoyed our videos this far and you'd like to help us continue to create more content, please consider joining our Patreon community by visiting patreon.com slash show. Those of you who become patrons will be treated to a video VIP pass with exclusive early access to all new episodes like our Trucking Culture series, as well as receive free decals, t-shirts, and truck posters. Interested in becoming part of our Patreon? Please visit the patreon.com slash show link in the description box below, and remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Number one. Long before Dodge debuted their D-Series models and made their entrance into the medium and heavy-duty market in 1936, the firm first helped forge a name for their fierce future competitor, Ford, as the Dodge brothers were contracted by Henry Ford to produce their Model T trucks. However, it wasn't too long before the brothers in business opted out of Ford to open up their own truck manufacturing company, originally called the Dodge Brothers Motor Company, in 1913. By the next year of 1914, the Dodge duo would design and debut the first car of their own, the Model 30, which essentially served as a slightly more upscale competitor to Ford's car. Number 2. Before Dodge's demise in 1975, they released their biggest, baddest, most beloved big rig with the Model 950 conventional cab, better known by its bighorn by name. Unfortunately, these beautiful bighorns were introduced amidst an evolving energy crisis, which eventually put an early end to their production, with a total of only 261 trucks built between 1973 and 1975, making these models the most highly sought-after Dodge Heavy Duty truck to ever debut, as well as one of the rarest rigs ever released. Number 3. As the darling of Dodge's heavy-duty trucks, the whereabouts of these beloved bighorn big rigs have been documented with great diligence due to their rarity. With only 10 total trucks sold in 1973 between the United States and Canada, the remaining 251 trucks were sold in the final few months, with 182 semis being sold in the States, 78 sold in Canada, and only one truck shipped to Mexico. Based on big rig registries and records, it's estimated approximately 105 to 110 of these beloved bighorns are still in existence to this day, with a limited number of the long noses being able to be bought and ready to restore, as several of the semis still sit intact as the rotting remains of the forgotten fan favorite freight haulers that were just too far gone. Number 4. Dodge designed their heavy-duty Tilt Cab L series, which launched in 1964, as the manufacturer's first major long-haul model and were known for looking like Dodge's most big rig built vehicle. Half the cab had an aluminum upper body, while the bottom half was built from fiberglass that caused the cab over to boast a much lighter body. These L series models were also sometimes called Michigan Centipedes, due to their abundance of axles, and were advertised for any road and any load. Number 5. Before the launch of the beloved L-Series cabovers, the company came out with their low-cab forward LCF trucks, also sometimes called the C-Series or Swing Out Fender Dodges, which were a cross between cabovers and conventionals, and came with the same cab debuted on the late 50s Dodge-produced pickups. The LCF series saw sales in Canada under the Fargo brand, but were also rumored to have been continually built through 1977, two years after Dodge's demise, and exported to use as military models. Number 6. Speaking of the L series and LCF series trucks, both of these big rigs relied on parts from the seemingly unrelated A100 series of vans, 
With the LCF series using the same single headlight trims and the medium duty L series semis using the same cab portion as the A100 van. Not only did this design save money and time, but it also allowed for endless possibilities and easier access for parts to be interchanged between trucks. Number seven, continuing on the LCF truck topic, the looks of these LCF trucks allowed them extremely easy identification within the industry due to their exclusively exterior mounted air cleaners and oil coolers. Built in both gasoline and diesel variants, virtually any engine option was available in the vehicle as they were produced in significantly smaller quantities than most Dodge models. Other options, including wraparound back windows, were offered but seldom seen. Also, had the company not closed in 1975, the larger LCF Dodge diesels were in line to be replaced by what would have been the 1976 short-nose Bighorn Semis. Number 8. Although Jeeps are acclaimed as the winning wartime warrior trucks within World War II, Dodge actually developed their first fully military-designed model with their half-ton WC series, which debuted as the U.S. Army's first standard light truck. Also throughout the entire era of the Second World War, Dodge served as the U.S. Army's sole producer of three-quarter-ton trucks, with a total of over 255,000 WC series built and shipped overseas. Additionally, Dodge was the U.S. Army's main manufacturer of half-ton and one-and-a-half-ton 6x6 trucks in World War II. With over a quarter million units built through August of 1945, the G502 three-quarter tons were the most commonly used variant of all the WC Series vehicles. Also, although a commonly made mistake, the WC Series was not an abbreviation for Weapons Carrier Series but rather a Dodge model code. All in all, not including mechanically related models, the WC series alone involved 52 versions of the vehicle. Number 9. After the war was over, Dodge developed the Wartime Warrior WC series into a similarly designed civilian 4x4 truck called Power Wagons. The Power Wagon was the first mass-produced 4x4 medium-duty truck and represents a significant predecessor to the many modern four-wheel drive trucks in use today. Originally developed as the WDX truck, the Power Wagon was identified internally by its engineering code T137 up until about 1960 and is still sometimes used in reference to the series. After being marketed in various models for 35 years by Dodge, the famous flat fender was phased out of production only to make a return in 2005 under the renowned Dodge Ram nameplate, where since 2013 it has been introduced as an individual model marketed by Ram trucks. Number 10. After Dodge decided to discontinue their heavy-duty truck line in 1975, a couple years later in 1978, the company came out with their limited edition line of light trucks called Lil Red Express Trucks. This little truck paid tribute to the demise of Dodge's larger long haulers with a sweet set of showroom shiny exhaust stacks, a flashy red paint job, and a loud rowdy big rig roar. Also much like many of Dodge's other models, these little red express trucks are rather rare and hard to find, with less than 10,000 trucks built in total. Thank you so much for watching our 10 things you didn't know about Dodge trucks. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 20k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into the live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We still have our truck history shirts available on our website at jackschromeshow.com, so please be sure to check them out. Save stacks on stacks at jackschromeshop.com with the all-new Roadworks exhaust kits for Peterbilt and Kenworth trucks. 
Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.